to the Words Make People podcast. This is a uh, metaphysical and religious podcast. We deal with the Holy Quran. We deal with the prophetic hadith of the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And we deal with the uh, previous scriptures, al Jill, the Bible, uh, Old New Testament, uh, Vedas, any, any of the previous scriptures. But in this particular series, we're dealing with the uh, so-called New Testament, known in Arabic language as al kitab al Injil, the book of Injil. The uh, last book, the, book of, the uh, book of Revelations, and we're looking at, we've looked at all of the book of Revelation up to chapter 12, and so we're on chapter 12 now, and we're dealing with um, part two. We're dealing with part two of uh, the podcast, Alice Long, the Dragon and the Jacobite Plan. And we're on chapter 12. We're looking at the splintering of the Islamic community. It's our belief that this, the splintering of the Islamic communities began <coughs> First, with the uh, death of Uthman, that was a small fracturing. And then with the death of uh, Imam Ali, Ibn Abi, Ibn Abi Talib, Imam Ali, nephew of the Prophet and the uh, son in law of the Prophet, his death. Then the death of the fifth Khalifa. Imam Hassan, and then it really split wide open with the death of Imam Hussein at Kabbalah. So we're looking at this chapter, the splittering of the Islamic community. Before we get into it, we're going to uh, ask that you, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, uh, consider subscribing. Hit that like button, hit the notification button, share the video, and make comments. Don't be afraid to make comments. We love to come. Even we um, may not 100% uh, agree with your comment, we still appreciate your comment because no one is perfect, and we're doing our best to try to be fair and balanced uh, as we present this um, podcast. We talked about the... Um, Influence of um, the uh, <clears throat> we talked about the influence of the significance of the number twelve in our last video. So uh, check that out. There'll be a link to it in the uh, description of this video and. Uh, and then feel free to check out other videos. We have a whole series beginning with uh, chapter one of the book of Revelation all the way to here. They're all in podcasts on the uh, YouTube channel. So check those out. This is book number six. And the name of the book is the same name of the podcast, The Dragon and the Jacobite Plan. So now we're going to go into our topic, subtitle, in chapter one of the book, Al Islam, the Dragon, and the Jacobite Plan. So the top subtitle for this particular podcast is The Splintering of the Islamic Community. And we're, we're going to read, start by reading from chapter 12, verse 3 to 6 of King James Version of the book of Revelations. It reads, Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, 
who will rule all nations with an iron scepter, and her child will snatch up to God alone. I'm sorry, and her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. And that's the uh, book of Revelations, Alakin Tabul and Jill, chapter 12, verse 3 to 6. And it's the King James Version. Now we want to give few uh, comments, insights from Imam W.D. Muhammad and also from uh, um, the uh, Hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, the um, Fetih Hadith of the Prophet and from the Quran. Now, and with Baker and the, uh, the information that comes from the Quran is uh, coming from insights as we look at comparative religion. Now, we want to make a point that the when it says that the dragon had seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns and his tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. The stars in this uh, verse is symbolic. That's uh, the stars are a parable. Stars represent very high people in very high places, and they are we kicked out of the sky, out of their uh, uh, high place, and they'll be flung down to the earth for the common people, common masses. And we see there are many, many uh, so-called stars, big people who are being uh, brought down to earth. So that's all that symbolizes. It's, it's the time when the Big wigs, religious, business, all sectors will be brought down to earth with the common masses. The woman represents the Muslim community. The Muslim community uh, during the time of the Prophet and up to the, this, time, this day and age. And it's symbolic about Islam moving from the east unto the west. The 1,260 days is actually 1,260 years. So from that point, was roughly the death, time of the death of uh, Imam Hassan, <coughs> the oldest son of Imam Ali. This day coincides with the advent of Master Deputy Farad Muhammad in Detroit, Michigan, uh, in America. We know he arrived in America approximately in 1930. And from 19, from, uh, so that was approximately 670 years between uh, the death of Hussein, uh, uh, Hassan, and the arrival of W. D. Farah Muhammad in the wilderness of North America. So let's get to the reading. The splintering of the Islamic community began with the death of Imam Ali. He was a noble on the 19th of Ramadan in 661 when he died from compl complications after being stabbed while leading Salat worship. Imam Ali appointed his oldest son, Imam Hassan, to be his successor on the fifth Khalifa. Just as Abu Bakr, he was a noble, the first Khalifa, Upon Umar, he was known to be his successor. Imam Hassan ibn Ali the second, Imam of Ali Bay, and the fifth Khalifa of the Sunni, was martyred in the year 671, approximately 1,260 years before the coming of Wazir Farad Muhammad, or W.F. Muhammad, or W.D. Farad. He was known by many names. So it was approximately 1,260 years before the coming of W.F. Muhammad to the wisdom of North America that Hassan ibn Ali was martyred. Imam Hassan Khalifa Shah was brutally opposed by Moabia and he waged a war against him, Imam Hassan, for six months before Imam Hassan stepped down as Khalifa. 
Even though Imam Hassan was the right to appoint the Khalifa, Imam Hassan stepped down from leadership to avoid the needless bloodshed of Muslims over ego and pride. Imam Hassan was able to note Imam Hassan was able to negotiate a treaty with Muawiyah that stated that his brother Imam, Hus Imam Hussein would succeed Muawiyah as Khalifa upon the death of Mu Muawiyah. When Muawiyah assumed the Caliphship, he immediately began to go against the treaty. It is believed by many that he had hacked a plot to have Imam Hassan killed. Now, we are not saying that's the case. We're just looking at the reports, and it's possible, and then it also is not possible. So we're not making one, we're not making a, um, we're not saying it's true, we're not, we, and we're not saying it's not true. But we, know, we do know that Muawiyah later blatantly went against the treaty by appointing his son as his successor instead of Imam Hussein, he was known. Imam Hussein and most of his family were eventually brutally killed at Kabbalah by Muawiyah's son, Yazir. This event marked the permanent splitting of the Islamic community into two camps, so-called Sunni and Shia. In the book, The Holy Quran, the Final Scripture, I state the following. The 42 months mentioned in Revelation chapter 11, verse 2 are equal to 1,260 days or 1,260 years, and I am of the opinion that the city, Mecca, was measured by the angel Gabriel in 670 AD at the death of the fifth Khalifa and second Imam of the Shia, Imam Hassan ibn Ali, he was noble, who was pardoned just eight or uh, ten years after the assassination of his father, Imam Ali. <clears throat> the assassination of Hadrat Uthman, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, and Imam Hussein, they were up and over. In such a short time span, left the Islamic community in total disarray. The murder of all five men were plotted, planned, and carried out by so-called Muslims. In less than 70 years after the departure of the Prophet Muhammad, the Muslim world had fallen to almost total darkness, except for a few Muslims who had held to the whole Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace be upon you. The historical animosity held by the leaders of Quraysh against Prophet Muhammad and his family, particularly Ali, is what led to the assassination of Imam Hassan by some say Muawiyah, but we know that he was killed by his wife. He was poisoned by his wife. And we know that Hussein was uh, assassinated by Muawiyah's son, Yazir. The, the Umayyad treated the family of the Prophet Muhammad horribly. They even had a tradition of cursing Hadrat Ali in their Friday sermon. By attacking the family of the Prophet Muhammad, the Muslims who followed Muawiyah and Yazid were led far, far astray from the true tenets of Al Islam. Now we want to move to a subtopic, a subtitle, uh, Al Islam, a stranger. <clears throat> the dragon being mentioned in Revelation 12, verse 3, is the Dajjal, Jacobite. He was able to successfully break up the Islamic community and cause discord and confusion. The woman is giving birth to the majestic Matthew who reflects the Prophet Muhammad and Christ Jesus. <coughs> hmm. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. America is the place that Islam is being revived and purified. So the place that the woman fled into into the wilderness of North America. Now we'll look at Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to 16. It reads, He said to Abram, Know for sure that your seed will live as foreigners in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. They will afflict them 400 years. I will also judge that nation whom they will serve afterward, they will come out with great substance. But you will go to your father in peace. You will be buried in a good old age. In the fourth gener generation, they will come here again. But the inequity of the Amorite is not yet full. In the quote. That's from Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 to 16. Imam W. D. Muhammad, in a May 2, 1975 lecture entitled World Savior, stated, and I quote, Remember the Holy Quran said that Jesus spoke while he was yet in the cradle. 
Jesus was a sign of something to come. The second Jesus is really you and me, not a flesh and blood individual. The second Jesus is a flesh and blood community of people that live with one body or a community with one head. It is the people who were slain socially, economically, spiritually, politically, morally, and mentally who rose from the grave to become the light of the world because of divine power. The story of Jesus is the story of our people today. Our feet have been painfully nailed to the cross. We haven't been free to move about for ourselves. Our hands have been mercilessly nailed to the cross. We haven't been free to work for ourselves. Our heart is dead. End of quote. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Islam began as a stranger and it will return, it will return as a stranger. The descendants of slaves who were brought to the North and South American Hemisphere from Abys Abyssinia or Africa are the strangers mentioned in the above hadith report of Prophet Muhammad in my humble opinion. We are the ones who were looked down upon. We are the ones who were and are being discriminated against and are call, calling the people back to the way of life called Al-Islam. Just like Bilal ibn Rabbah, he was of the noble. The great Muazzin called the people to Al-Islam during the time of Muhammad the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be and blessing all be upon him. In the book, Tafsul in Intermediation Between Allah and the Creation by Muhammad bin Jamil Zainu, he states the following, and I quote, The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has informed us that the correct deen is like a stranger to the people when he said, Indeed, Islam is Indeed, Islam began as a stranger and shall return as a stranger. Yes, it began. So, to boo, to bar a tree in paradise for the strangers. This was reported by Muslim from Abu Harara. And in the narrative given by Imam Ahmad and Ibn Majah, it's, it was, it, it's, it, uh, they, they write, or they state, it was then said, O Messenger of Allah, who are the strangers? He replied, those looked down upon in every tribe, and in the narration of Termini, so to bar for the strangers, those who rectify what the people have corrupted of Masuna, and in the out in the and in the authentic in the authentic authentic narration of Ibn Ahmad, it is reported that the Messenger of Allah people found him after being questioned as to who strangers were said, the righteous people are amidst many evil people amongst many evil people. Those who disobey them are greater than those who obey them, in the quote. This group strives for the ways of correction and reform and carry the torch of revival for the Muslims awaken and return to the correct form of Islam. Let us say to those who turn away to their own ruin what Allah has said to the equals. Qala Allah Ta'ala Wa ma lana illa Nathawakalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaalaal
it's my um re, uh, my research led me this led me to this. So inshallah. But Allah is all knowing, Allah is the uh, Allah Allah is Al Aylam. He is the knower. So if we're wrong, we ask Allah to forgive us and get us to the right understanding. So the nineteen God of the Holy Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and Al Islam. Imam W. D. Muhammad in, in a January 29, 1978 lecture dealt with many important things for the development of the human being. And in that lecture, he talked about the five movements or activities, the three developments, the one essential definition, two principal operations, and one discipline. In the same lecture, he also talked about the seven elevations or planes as represented by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon, peace be upon him, on the night journey and his subsequent ascension to heaven. Now this lecture that we're, that we're taking this from is um, entitled The Three Stages of Development. And like I said, it was January 29, 1978. I think it was the fourth Sunday address. <coughs> now, moving on. So the five movements represent the five senses, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, and feeling. The three developments represent the three stages of development, physical, mental, and spiritual. The one essential definition Definition is the government or self government. The two, number two, is the principal operations. Two principal operations taking in, the operation of taking in, and then the operation of giving out. So breathing in and breathing out. Two, two principal operations. And then one discipline, Al Islam. Now, Muhammad, so that's that. So let, let me go back through that again. Imam Muhammad, Imam Deputy Muhammad, in 1978 lecture, given January 29th, dealt with five movements of our activities, three developments, one essential definition, two principal operations, and one discipline. And in this same lecture, he also, also talked about the seven elevations of, of planes as represented by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the night journey and his subsequent, uh, subsequent ascension into heaven. So, once again, the five movements, according to Imam Wazuddin Muhammad, Rahim Allah, mercy of Allah be upon him, the five movements are the five senses. And you know, the five senses are hearing, seeing, smelling, texting, and feeling. And the three developments, according to Imam Muhammad, are, that's represent the three stages of development. The physical, mental, and spiritual are the three stages of the soul. And the uh, one essential definition is government or self-government. The two uh, principal operations is taken in and, and given out. And the one discipline, Al-Islam. So that's that. Now, Imam Muhammad was born and especially prepared to bring, bring to us and the world the greatest body of knowledge on the reality of God and the understanding of language. The number 12, when 12 equals 144, symbolized the 144,000 converts. I believe this number all, 12 is also some symbolic of the 12 by Emma, Imam from the house of the Prophet Mustafa Muhammad el Amin, the 12 disciples of the Prophet Jesus, Isa, and the 12 princes from the house of the Prophet Ishmael, the son of the Prophet Ibrahim. Abraham. According to Imam W.D. Muhammad, the number 19 in the whole Quran is symbolic of consciousness. 1 plus 9 equals 10. It is also believed by many Islamic scholars that the whole Quran is not only protected by the numerical code of 19, but that this numerical code also helps to guard its integrity. A person believes that just like Allah guards the integrity of the whole Quran by the numerical code of 19, he also sent 19 Ayyama, Imams, to guard the integrity of Al Islam after the physical death of the Prophet Muhammad. These 19, those 19 Imams, are Emma, are, in my humble opinion, this is, this is my opinion, my humble opinion, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, Hassan Hussein, Zayd al Abidin, Muhammad al Bakir, Jafar al Sadiq, Imam, Han, Imam, Imam Abu Hanafi, Imam Abdul, Imam Malik, Imam, Imam, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Shafi, Musa al-Khazim, Ali ibn Musa, 
Muhammad al-Jawad, Ali al-Hadi, Hassan al-Khaskari, and Muhammad ibn Hassan. Now we're going to look at the subtitle, the 19 Guardians Guardians of the Holy Quran, the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad and Al-Quran. We're going to look at it in we're going to look at the all the, the biography, a slight biography of those 19 imams. So we're going to look at those 19, the life of those 19 imams in a little more detail, inshallah. First on the list is Imam Al-Imam Abdullah ibn Uthman. Or, as his popularly known as Abu Bakr as siddiq So his kunya, his nickname was Abu Bakr as siddiq and Abu Bakr as Siddiq, born May, I'm sorry, born in five, August 23rd, 573 A.D., died 634 A.D., or 13 after the Hijra. So that was the first, that's the first Imam I have on the list, the first Khalifa. He's a Mur, the first al Miru Mukminun after the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Second, Al Imam Umar ibn al Khattab, born June 580 AD, left this world November 7, 644 AD. He is sometimes referred to as Umar al Farooq, Umar, the distinguisher between truth and falsehood. The second caliph. Then the third caliph, or uh, commander of the faithful. Ali Imam Uthman ibn Affan. He, bo- he was born 580, July 17, five, uh, 580 AD, died 656 AD. Third Khalifa. The fourth Khalifa, Ali Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, born on the 13th of Rajab in 24, uh, before the Hijra. 21st of Ramadan, 40 after the Hijra, was when he passed away. So in, in the Roman um, calendar, uh, Roman Gracia of uh, Greek calendar. He was born March 17, 599. He died February 28, 661. Bill Khalifa, Imam Hassan was appointed by Imam Ali to succeed him, so he's the fifth Khalifa. And Imam Hassan ibn Ali ibn Abu Talib, born the 15th of Ramadan. Um, Three years after the Hijra, died 28 of Safa, 50 after the Hijra, which was 671 A.D., approximately um, 1,206 years for the arrival of uh, W.D. Farad in the wilderness of North America. Number six, Imam Ali Imam Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, born the third of Shaban, 626 A.D., at Medina. Died on the 10th of Muharram, 680 A.D. at Kabbal. Seven Imam, Al-Imam Ali ibn Hussein. So Al-Imam Ali, Ali, the son of Hussein. Born on the 15th of Jumad al-Awwa, 38 after the Hira. Died on the 25th of Muharram, 95 years after the Hira. Was it approximately January 6, 659 AD, and he died, born January 6, 659 AD, died October 20, 713 AD. Then next is Al Imam Muhammad al Bakr, born the first of Raja 57 after the Hira, which was equated to 676 AD, uh, died the seventh of Dula al Hijra. 114 years after Hira, which is a, which equates to 743 A.D. Ninth Imam, Al-Imam Jaffa as siddiq born on the 17th of Rabi al-Awwa, which is what, 83 years after the Hira, passed away on the 25th of Shawwal, 148 years after the Hira, which was approximately equal to a pro- born April 27, died December 4, 765. His um, full name is Jaffa ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Hussein. So the tenth Imam, Al Imam Azam Abu Hanafa, Muhammad an Nuhman ibn Thabit ibn Nukman Azuta ibn Ma'ad. Uh, 
formerly known a uh, more um, widely known as Imam Abu Hanafi. Imam Abu Hanafi was born in 699 uh, AD, died 676 AD. He is the uh, first of the uh, of the uh, Sunni Imams who brought in uh, fiqh. Uh, not necessarily the first imam, but the most recognized, and is recognized as the father of the imams in from the Sunni side. Now, number eleven, Al Imam Malik ibn Anas ibn Malik ibn Amil al Asbahi, born seven fifteen A.D. died seven ninety six A.D., which equates to ninety three after. Born 93 years after the Hijra, died 179 years after the, after the Hijra. He's also known as simply Imam Malik. He is the founder of the Maliki school. Imam Hanafi is the founder of the Hanafi school. Imam Malik is the founder of the, Han of the Maliki school of uh, Islamic jurisprudence, uh, Thik. Also known as Mothabs. 12th Imam on my list. Al Imam Musa al Qasim ibn Muhammad Bakr uh, Musa al Qasim. He's more famously known as Musa al Qasim. So the Imam Musa al Qasim, son of Muhammad Bakir, he's also he, 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 he's the grandson of Muhammad, Muhammad Bakir and the son of uh, Imam uh, Jaffa. So Musa al Qasim. Born seven to Sawa, 128, 128 years after the Hijra, and died 20, on the 25th of Rajab, 183 years after the Hijra, which is equated to born October 28, 746 AD. He died September the 1st, 799 AD. 13th Imam, Al Imam Ali ibn Musa al Rizza. Commonly known as Ali al Rizza. Born on the 11th of Dula Kihada, 148 years after the Hijra, 17th of Sawa, 203 years, died 17th of Sawa for 203 years after the Hijra. Uh, with the question, born January the 1st, 765 AD, he died May the 26th, 818 AD. 14th Imam. Al-Imam Abu Abdullah Muhammad Ibn Idris al-Shafi, also known as Imam al-Shafi. Born 150 years after the Hijra, he died probably 204 years after the Hijra, which equates to seven, born 767 AD, he died 820 AD. He is the founder of the Shafi school of, of law, of fiqh, of the Shafi Matab. Fifteenth Imam, Al Imam Ahmad bin Muhammad ibn Hanbal Abu Abdullah al Shabani, also more popularly known as Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. He is the founder of the Hanbali school. He was born in 780 A.D., died in 855 A.D., which was born 164 years after the Hijra. He died. Uh, and he died 241 years after the Hijra. And as we say, he is the founder of the Hanbali Matha, of uh, Hanbali School of Thought, of Fiqh, School of Fiqh. Sixteenth Imam on the list, Al Imam Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Musa, Muhammad al Taqi, also known as Muhammad al Jawad. He is the ninth Imam in the Sunni, I mean, in the Shia order of the of uh, twelve Imams. Next, and um, he was born tenth of Raja, one hundred ninety-five years after the Hijra. He died on the twenty-ninth of Dhul Al Kaza, two hundred twenty years after the Hijra. Was equated to born 
April 12, 811 A.D. He died November 27, 835 A.D. The 10th Imam of the Shia, Al-Imam Ali al-Hadi, also known as Imam Ali al-Naki, born September 8, 828 A.D., died July 1, 868 A.D. Then the uh, 11th, 11th Imam of the Shia, Al Imam Hassan ibn Ali ibn Muhammad uh, Hassan al Askari, um, born on the 8th of Rabi al Thana, 233 after the Hijra, 8th of, died on the 8th of Rabi al Awa, 250 years after the Hijra, which equates to being born on December 6, 846 AD, died January 1st, 874 AD. And the 19th, uh, the, the Imam recognized that the, uh, the 12th Imam would be the 19th Imam, and the 19th Imam is symbolic because, and I, I, I will explain that as I go on. So, his, his name according to the Shia is Al Imam Muhammad Al Mahdi, or Muhammad Ibn Hassan Ibn Ali. So we accept him as a Muhammad Ibn Hassan Ibn Ali, one of the uh, great great grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad. An imam in the in the tradition of the uh, Jafari uh, fiqh. Now, although his death is unknown, he died physically and is no longer living. That's my I'm, my mother's opinion that he is dead. He died like any mortal human being. So Muhammad ibn Hassan ibn Ali was the last in, in the line. That's why I stopped at 12. Now, I believe there were 19 uh, Emma who were assigned by Allah as the successor of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 12 being directed from the house of Muhammad. The opposition the Sunni documents which state that the number of Imams, or Emma, after the Prophet is 12. Allah assigned these 12 Imams not just because they were from the house of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but because they were in their time the most knowledgeable, the most illustrious, the most God-fearing, the most pious, the best in personal virtues, and the most honored before Allah. In no way do I believe they were divine or infallible. They were only human. And I want to make that 100% clear. I don't believe in oculation. I definitely don't believe in infallibility. I'm the prophet only claimed to be infallible when it came to religious matters. He never. He didn't. He did not uh, claim to be infallible when it comes to every subject. He only claimed to be infallible when it came to the religious knowledge. When it came to the Quranic knowledge. So I know this is very, this will, this will be very controversial, controversial to some people. But I'm of the opinion that. It's almost near impossible to be the in the house of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he did not teach Fatima personally. He did not teach Ali personally. As he taught Uthman Ali, I mean Uthman, Abu Bakr, and all the other Sahaba, but living in the house of the Prophet had a, a different uh, vibe. Also, there's no way that Fatima and Ali would not teach Hassan and Hussein. Consequently, no way they wouldn't teach their offspring. So they had a direct line, just like uh, the Abu Bakr uh, had a direct line being the friend of the Prophet. Uh, the, uh, they all had the connection with the Prophet Muhammad. Aisha had a di direct line being married to the Prophet. So she had access to his personal life, but also uh, the line of the hadith that came from the family of the prophet. That was a pure line passed down from father to son, from father to son. So that Sicilia is a pure Sicilia. And we know that at the at Kabbalah, in, uh, going back to um, the um, 
fourth Imam of the uh, Shia, Imam um, Ali ibn Hussein, he became the Imam at a very young age, but he was taught by his sister because all we know that the Prophet said that the that the um, women sh should be taught also. So the whole household was taught in Islam. So his older sister, Zainab, I believe her name was, I'm sure her name was Zainab, she passed the knowledge on that she had got and helped to um, cement Imam Ali ibn Hussein's knowledge. So the knowledge was kept in the, uh, in the family. They passed the knowledge down, just like any family does when it comes, like all Muslims are supposed to pass the knowledge they receive. When you get the knowledge, you're supposed to share it. So, you're supposed to teach, uh, reach one, teach one. That's what the family of the prophet did. That's what the Atlil Bait. The Atlil Bait passed their knowledge down, not just from father son, but from the whole household. Now, so going back, so, I don't believe we should disqualify members or descendants of the prophet's family from leadership just because they were, they were from his family. The knowledge was derived from their ancestor, the prophet, through their fathers and also by direct teaching from Allah through inspiration of Ilham. Many of the other Bay were Aliyah, uh, Imam Jaffa, for sure. I'm also of the opinion that the full ayama of the Adil Sunnah were also divinely guided and protected by Allah. We know that um, Abu Han, uh, uh, Imam Abu, Abu Hanafa was of the Adiyah. Uh, the ayama of the ayama of Adil Bay, along with the ayama of Adil Sunnah come together to form the 19 gardens of the Holy Quran and the Sunnah tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want to look at a verse from the Quran, Holy Quran chapter 2, verse 124 from the Abdullah Yusuf translation. Allah says, and I, uh, Allah says, call Allah Ta'ala, he Allah says, wa ila abtala Ibrahim rabbuhu bikalimati wa attamahuna and remember that Abraham was tried by his Lord with certain commands. Qala, with certain commands which you feel. Qala, Qala, he said, Inni jaha'iluka, inni ja'aluka linnasi, imamman, imamman. I will make thee an imam to the nations. Allah, he said. Uh, he pleaded. Woman, the reality. And also a man for my offsprings. And also, also for my offsprings. Allah, Allah said. La yadalu ahdi adhalimina adhalimina but my promise is not within the reach of the evildoers. Salaka Allah Hazim Allah may speak the truth. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 17 verse 18 to 20. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and will proceed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will mollify him, his, him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Genesis chapter 17, verse 18 to 20. Now, Genesis chapter 25, verse 12 to 16. Now, these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar 
the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bore unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generation. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nabajat, and Kedar, and Adbil, and Mithsam, and Mismah, and Duma, and Masa, Hada, and Tamar, Jetur, Nefesh, and Kedma. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their encampments, twelve princesses according to their nations. Genesis chapter 12, verse 12 to 16, King James Version. Now we want to look at subtitle Dajjal the Deceiver. The red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns is symbolic of the Dajjal system. The word Dajjal literally translates as deceiver. The satanic antichrist influence takes over and controls human beings. Christ is called the second Adam and son of man, and Christ is an example of the model human being. The prophet represents stages of elevation and the development of the human being. The Antichrist is anti-human. He wants to destroy or corrupt the human nature. Allah says in the Quran, chapter 7, verse 11 to 18, Malana use of a translation. Allah will be like this, Shaitan, the regime, Bismillah, Rahman, the Rahim. I seek refuge with Allah from Satan and reject the enemy. We begin with Allah, thank the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. It is we who created you and gave you shape. Then we bade the angels bow down to Adam, and they bow down, not so he bleeds. He refused to be of those who bow down. Allah said, what prevented thee from bowing down when I commanded thee? He said, I am better than he. Thou didst create me from fire and him from clay. Allah said, get thee down from this. It is not for thee to be arrogant here. Get out, for thou art of the meanest of creatures. He gave, he, Allah said, I'm sorry, uh, Allah forgive me. He, Satan said, give me respect to the day they are raised up. Allah said, be thou among those who have respect. He, the Satan said, because thou hast thrown me out of the way, lo, I will lie and wait for them on thy straight way. And I will assault them from behind, from before them and behind them, from the right and the left. Nor will thou find in most of them gratitude for their mercies. Allah said, Get out from this disgrace and spell. If any of them follow thee, hell will I fill with you all. Salakallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah is the truth. Allah's word is supreme. Holy Quran, chapter 7, verse 11 to 18. Now, he will, uh, Satan will corrupt and control the very elite in the society of man. The dragon has tried to prevent the birth of every prophet and sire that had ever been sent by God, and he tried to block the birth of the Majadid Mahdi. The Dajjal influence was let loose on the planet Earth during the time of the Prophet Muhammad. They caused the Muslim community to become divided from the men. They used the issue of a successful to cause the Muslims to begin to kill each other. Honest bin Malik now read that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Every prophet from the first to the last warned and informed his people about the Dajjal due to the severity of his trials and tribulations. So as, as that can be found in Sahih Bukhari and in Sahih Muslim. According to the violation of this hadith, no prophet was sent who did not warn his people of the Dajjal. Abu Harara narrated that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The hour will not occur until 30 Dajjals, deceivers of false prophets, appear, and all of them claim to be a prophet of Allah. That's included in the collection by Abu Dawood. Out of these studies of jail, the last one will be the evil's one. He is the Antichrist or false messiah, and he has one or two eyes, the form of this figure. Jesus was the prophet of Allah, who taught that Allah God is the one undifferentiated God. He did not say that God is the trinity of three persons, and that he was one of those divine persons. Christianity, Christianity is, in, is itself an Antichrist in some respects, because it is teaching the opposite of what Christ taught. The text of the Bible, for the most part, have been corrupted by deceivers over the centuries to support the dogma of the Trinity. The early church was good, Unitarian, Islamic, but corruption set in with Constantine and the Council of Nicaea. To get the truly 
insoluble account of Jesus, one must read the book of Barnabas, the Bible, Old and New Testament, and the Holy Quran. The Antichrist, Jacobite, slash the jail are not only the ones who deny the message of Christ, Jesus, and his, and his humanity, but they also are the ones who say he was never born or existed. So that's the end of our uh, podcast for today. We will pick up next week on a, on a subtitle, Understanding the Beast. So we hope you got value from the uh, podcast. If you have any questions and we'll make any comments, feel free to make comments in the, in the uh, comments. We ask you to be uh, cordial and show respect uh, and be uh, open-minded. So I know you're not going to agree with everything I just put forth, but inshallah, you will see the, the, uh, the logic behind it. So until next time, please like the video, share the video, make, uh, like I said, make comments. Also watch this video, watch this next video coming up. So if you want to be a member, there's memberships uh, available. So until next time, assalamu alaikum. The peace of God be upon you.